Welcome aboard to episode 42 of Paint the Town Dead. We're going to start off. We're, we're getting a little crazy today. We're changing the format. What? It's getting wild. What's happening? We're going to start off with what you're looking at, sort of. Oh, are because we? Because we're going to get knock one out real quick because oh. Caitlin ruined everything. <laughs> um, the finale of Mandalorian. I watched it. I did and not. I, and <laughs> this is our spoiler free review. I liked it. Um, go watch it if you want to watch it. Be quick. There's spoilers everywhere. They're popping off at like 6 a.m. the day the episode released. So, uh, good luck to you, Caitlin. Thank Hopefully you. you don't get spoiled by I, everything. I don't think I will. I, I'm pretty oblivious, so it helps. Yeah, just stay off the internet forever. Okay. I, which is always a good idea. I think that's a, a great idea. I think that's a wonderful idea. Agreed. So, obviously, Caitlin has not been watching The Mandalorian, yeah. as promised. I'm sorry, everybody. I I feel like I let you all down, but mostly, I feel like I let Andrew down. <laughs> exactly. I have nobody I can say all of my words to. You know what? Out loud, anyway. Here, here's the good news. I had stuff to do. I also had other stuff to do. But you know what? I'm about to have a couple days off here. Well, I'm on call. Hopefully, I don't get called in a lot. But... Maybe I'll have some time to actually watch it before our next recording. You said you were going to have time you last know, week. You know, I, I underestimated I underestimated how much I love Lego Harry Potter, number one. Number two, I also underestimated how busy I would be with other things. So, Okay, well, I don't know. I, so, Andrew, yeah. I need you to um, meet me here at, at, this, at this level and get off me. <laughs> I just need you to um, do as you said you were going to do. <laughs> it's just going to take a little time. It's fine. And you, got, you better hurry up because you're going to get swallowed up by other stuff. I know. It's going to get spoiled too. And I do want to watch too, it. Especially because there's some wild stuff. Don't tell me. Shh. Don't. don't, the, don't I, no, all I'll uh, say is the thing from... So there's like wild stuff that I talked about sort of without talking about it at all uh -huh. that happens like throughout the season that is like really cool yeah you know like side stuff i don't exactly so that stuff you're gonna be like i don't care yep. but anyway okay this yeah. is the thing that you i'm gonna would watch it that even you would care about okay, i I'm, think i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch it. it's gonna happen i'm ready all right so you wanna you wanna jump into it tell us what we're doing i do i do andrew i'm i'm doing the story this week so you better listen up it's it's a doozy it's a doozy it's a tall tall task for me i don't even listen when i'm doing the episode so <laughs> well it's 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 a pretty brutal one um and actually i have sweet john to thank for this um because i was like oh man i gotta figure out what i'm gonna do for my case this week and he was like well, what about this one which it actually disclaimer i'm a i'm a fan of this it it's not a it's not like a specifically arkansas crime you know how i do because you like to pawn off your crimes on other states. Well, you know, I like things that have connections to Arkansas, as well as Arkansas crimes, which there are plenty to cover. Um, but this one, well, you'll see how it how it's connected to Arkansas. Um, so right off the bat here, we're going to be talking about multiple victims of the same killer. And I want you kind of doing something different here. I want you to hear their names first. I want you to hear the victims' names first. Obi Faye Ash of Cotter, and she was murdered in Mountain Home. That's Arkansas. Jean Bianchi of McHenry, Illinois. Janice Balliard, and she's from Evanston, Illinois. Jean Lingenfelter, she is also from McHenry. And I wanted to mention this first because, as we kind of talked about recently, I want our focus to be on the victims, even though we will be talking in depth about their murderer and his crimes, but they're all these women are all connected. Um, so the bulk of our story does take place in Illinois. Yeah, so just to jump in, that is something we've talked about a yes. little bit. Like we mentioned it, well, I mentioned it on a personal post. I guess you should put it on like the actual yes. account. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, it's weird naming these episodes because normally if there's only one victim, we name it after them. Right. But if there's like multiple victims, 11, yeah. we name it after John R. Kaiser, yeah, the murderer. Right. And it feels a little weird. I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. it. It feels odd, but it doesn't seem like. There's a good answer. But yeah. if you have a good answer, let us know. Yeah, of what to name the episodes. Because um, we don't want to honor these terrible, terrible, awful, no good people. Um, so anyways, the bulk of our story, like I said, takes place in Illinois. It starts in Arkansas. And just a warning, I said it was a doozy and I'm in it. These are horrifically violent crimes against women. 
But that being said, I want to go ahead and jump into this story, which unfortunately has to start at the very beginning. So we, w- we are going to talk about uh, our killer. So born June 27th, 1949 at the Mason- Masonic? Masonic. Masonic. Masonic Hospital, thank you, in Chicago to Charles Gilbert Smith and Dolores Recklin. Uh, this is weird though, because I read another article and it said uh, our killer's name. Oh, Mark Mark Allen Smith is our, our killer. Said his mother was Sally Jean Chester and his father was Dennis Smith. So those are two completely different parents. So I don't know which one to believe. So <coughs> uh, the couple though had four children, other children at home. When Mark was about two or three years old, his parents divorced and his mother received primary custody of him. And this is... So that'd be in like the fifties. That'd yeah, be a lot more difficult. Yes, yes. I think I think there was like a big legal change at some point, probably in like the sixties or seventies, that made it easier to get divorced. Yeah. But, you know, obviously it's harder legally and then also uh culturally right. at this time. Which can bring a lot of strife into a young child's life probably. Yeah. <clears throat> so his mother received primary custody of him. At age seven, his mother remarried and the family moved into the basement of her in-laws house in McHenry County, Illinois, which is, I looked it up because I didn't know, you know, I'm not familiar with Illinois except for Chicago. Um, and uh, McHenry is like really, really far north Illinois, very far north Illinois. So there's that. It's practically um, the other state above it. Michigan, is that right? Wisconsin. There you go. I'm really great. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, no, I was just trying <clears throat> to figure out where it was on a map relative. It's it's a ways away from Chicago. Yeah, it, it's quite far north. So he began to attend the public school there in McHenry, but he was not adjusting well at all. So he had a lot of anger issues and it it was practically uncontrollable anger. So he was moved back to Chicago where he had settled in and done okay. But in third grade, he's eight years old, by the way, third grade, after his return to Chicago, while attending Edgebrook Public School, Mark attempted to strangle a female student from his class behind the school which is terrifying. And I'm not sure of the repercussions for this action. I'm sure there were some, but I I don't know what they were. But another year later, one year later at nine, nine years old, we're not even double digits, nine years old, Mark stabbed a six-year-old playmate more than 20 times with a pen knife, which is horrifying. Yeah, nine-year-old and also it's a six-year-old child. Yes, awful. That's wild and uh, definitely a uh, blueprint for the future so the young boy that he attacked ended up surviving and mark was sent to a psychiatrist rightfully so hopefully more than that but i i don't know um but nothing else terribly eventful occurred in his childhood that i could find probably more stuff but i don't know after graduating school he joined the army for the vietnam war he would be stationed in west germany in 1966 and in 1967 Mark was court-martialed for assaulting four African-American colleagues, which is just great. And after three years in the Army, so 66 to 69, he returned to the USA, settled back in McHenry County. However, I read a journal article that stated he, at some point in 1969, resided in Mountain Home, Arkansas, and was employed at a TV repair shop, which is where he met his first victim, Obi Faye Ash. I do not know the connection of how he ended up in Mountain Home, could not find out, but it'd be very interesting to see how he ended up there because it's like 10 or 11 hours from, eh, it's like 10 hours from Mountain Home to McHenry County. Not only that, but it's it's not like a destination place. No, no, no uh, not talking best about Mountain Home, but it is it is pretty rural for yeah, the most part. You go there to go to the lake in the summer. Right, there's a big old lake, whatever it's called, North Fork. North Fork Lake. Yeah, yeah, big old lake there. Which is a man-made lake Yeah, by the Army Corps of Engineers. It's It's gigantic. I've been there, and Mountain Home, it's like north central Arkansas, roughly. Yeah. Which is, like, it's not even on, like, the interstate. No. Mm -mm. So, it's it's not, it's pretty remote, relatively. Yes, agreed. So, but he at some point lived there in 1969. So, we're going to talk about O.B. Faye Ash, which, again, we said was his first confirmed victim. Uh, So, O.B. Faye Ash was a 32-year-old housewife and a mother of three young children when she met Mark Smith in 1969. On December 3rd, Mark abducted Obi and proceeded to rape and strangle her. 
After he believed her to be dead, Mark stabbed Obi repeatedly. Again, after he strangled her, he then mutilated her corpse by stabbing her repeatedly. After this, he tied Obi up with wire, placed her in the backseat of her own car, and drove her down the road and parked a short distance from the TV repair shop. Her body was discovered later that day. And I hate that there, this victim is where the least amount of information is. Um, there's not much detail on a lot of articles. Uh, pretty cut and dry there. But, you know, this is our Arkansas victim. And I hate, you know, this is what started his U.S. crime spree. So, um, anyways, I just wish there was more about her. I would like to read more about her. Um, so, that brings us to our second confirmed victim, Jean Bianchi. So just over a month after murdering Obi, Mark made his way all the way back up to McHenry. Like I said, it's like a nine hour drive from Mount Home to McHenry. Um, and on January 27th, 1970, 27 year old Jean Bianchi, mother of two, went to a local laundromat to do that chore, the family laundry, which just is awful, the worst. So she packed everything up, went to laundromat, was doing laundry. She phoned her husband about an hour or so later to let him know that she was finishing up and she would be coming home shortly. However, uh, Jean would never return home. And after not returning, police were notified by her husband. Her laundry and an unfinished letter to a friend were found in the laundromat. So, I mean, like, all her laundry was still there. The letter was just, like, stopped mid-sentence. And, I mean, clearly something had happened. Her vehicle was also found near the laundromat. So for three days, her family, friends, and investigators searched high and low for her. And on January 30th, Jean's partially clothed body was found in an icy creek uh, near a bridge not far from town. She was absolutely unrecognizable. Um, She had been severely beaten about the face and she had multiple teeth knocked out, which that force, I mean, is an immense force. Like that is anger, pure anger right there. And when an autopsy was performed, it was found that Jean was stabbed 17 times in the neck, back, and chest. She also had a liver laceration. And I don't know if that's from like stabbing or just like blunt force, like just the beating or something. Either way, to have a laceration on your liver, some pretty deep wounds. Um, her vagina had been traumatically lacerated as well. Sand and grass were discovered in her throat. So, I mean, it was just an um, absolute horrific mess terrible terrible uh so then that brings us to another month later and our third confirmed victim janice balliard so one month after murdering jean jean bianchi mark made his way to De Plains, illinois we've talked about this no idea what's the correct answer on how to pronounce it because it's d-e-s-p-l-a-i-n-e-s I think it's De Plains. I guess if you, if we go with another Midwestern city mm-hmm. that is spelled, has a similar setup, uh-huh. like Des Moines. Yeah. So maybe it's De Plain. I don't know. That's oh, my guess. Okay. That would be my guess just based on Des Moines. The S is silent. The yeah. S's are silent. Get those S's out of here. We don't okay. want them. Okay, cool. I'll go with that. I can get behind that. Yeah. I, d- I don't know if that's like, maybe it's like mm-hmm. French where, and maybe it is based on French. I'm not sure. I think it is. Because those, yeah, those would have been part of the... Isn't Illinois a French word? Maybe. Arkansas is. Ar- I thought it was that was an Indian thing. It's a Frenchification of an Indian word. Gotcha. And that's why there's a silent S. Because um, French, they... We were a part my, of the Louisiana Purchase. That's right. We were the third state formed out of it. Number 25, baby! Halfway! That's 50% right. every in, time. That's <laughs> right. In your face, Michigan. You were supposed to be founded the same day, but you weren't because of a whole thing with Ohio. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> De, Mo- De Plain, De Plain, Illinois. <clears throat> so here on February 27th is where Mark encountered Janice Jan, as she was known to her friends, Balliard. Jan worked in the Resin Research Lab, which was part of the DeSoto Chemical Company in Mount Prospect, Illinois, which is not far from McHenry and all that. She worked at this area with Mark Smith. Um 22-year-old Jan was from Evanston, Illinois. She graduated from Northwestern University where she was a member of Chi Omega Sorority. So, smart wo- smart woman yes. and a popular woman. Northwestern is a very prestigious university. Yes, it is. Um, 
I remember in Evanston, the only reason I know it exists is because of Northwestern. Oh, that's in that's where Northwestern is. Yeah, oh, and okay. it's like r- right outside of Chicago. That I did know that. Like Northwestern has branded themselves as Chicago's Big Ten team or whatever. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, so it's like it is a it's very, a suburb. It's a suburb of Chicago. Yeah, but it's a it's a very big time university as far as yes. like being academically elite. Yes, and she was incredibly intelligent. She was engaged to be married, uh, and her wedding was to take place on June 20th, 1970. Um, A friend and partner of Jan's once said of her, quote, Jan was my lab partner in 1970 in a course called C61 Advanced Chemistry. The course ran way, way over time, but Jan was always cheerful and enthusiastic. We wrote a little sign to put above the workbench that said, C61 forever. It takes that long, (laughs) which I thought was funny. All of us went on to good careers, and Jan surely would have too. And that's from Bob Bambara, Professor Emerita, Emer, em, Emeritus. Thank you, Emeritus at the University of Rochester. It was her lab partner and friend. Um, so Mark would work later hours at the lab, kind of late hours, as would Jan. And one evening, Jan went down to the basement, and Mark followed her. While there, Mark made sexual advances on Jan, which she resisted. Jan did not return home that night, and she was quickly reported missing by her fiance. Her body was found the next day at the at the chemical at the at the lab research lab. So, what did he? Do we know what he did there at the lab? Oh no, I don't know. Um, But he kind of worked odd jobs, TV repair, maintenance, things like that. So I'm assuming he he might have. He probably wasn't like. A researcher, no, he I'm was, guessing. I was going to say, he, we never went over him doing university no, stuff. No, he so. most assuredly was not a part of the research team. He probably was a janitor, to be honest. Not that there's anything wrong with janitor work, but he did maintenance and things of that nature. So he would not have been a part of her research like, team. Would have been a handyman yes, or something? Yes. Okay. Um. So then, you know, all these are kind of going unsolved for a while. So... On May 27th, which is exactly three months after Jan's murder and four months after Jean's murder, um, May 27th, uh, 17-year-old Jean Ann Lingenfelter, Jean Lingenfelter, another Jean, she left her home so she could go study at a friend's house, and she was one week away from graduation. They were in their finals week. Jean was an honor student at McHenry High and had once triple dated Mark to prom. So I guess she had three dates to prom, which sounds kind of fun. But wouldn't that or would that have been like a double date where it's like two <laughs> couples? So there was like three couples. Oh, I don't know. Is that wouldn't yeah? Wouldn't that be what that is? Oh, maybe? you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means. I assumed it was her and three other guys, but it also could be <laughs> it's three couples. Yeah, I think my idea makes more sense. I know. I like mine better. It sounds more fun. So after two hours of studying with her friend, Jean left her friend's house with Mark, uh, who she knew. Her friend watched her get into his car, and then they drove away. And as you can probably guess, Jean did not return home that night. Uh, Sick with worry, her parents phoned authorities and reported her missing. Just the very next day, her body was found by a young man on a beach in Lakeland Park subdivision in the McHenry area. At autopsy, her body showed signs of extreme violence and beating, rape, and strangulation. So... This is all, you know, it's kind of a mystery. And clearly there have been two victims in the McHenry area. And um, Janice was not far as well. Uh, So things are heating up. Feelings were high. Guards were up around McHenry. um, As two of their own had been murdered by a cold killer. And they had quickly connected the cases. And in the search for Jean, after she went missing, Mark just couldn't help himself. And he put himself into the search party, as we it often see. Yeah, isn't that always the way? Yes, it really is. It because they just have to know. Yeah. They just have to be a part of it. As they say in the Mandalorian, this is the way. It is not the way, though. This it, is not the way. It's their way. It's their way. Yes. And, and maybe the people who say this is the way in the Mandalorian aren't the ones to follow. Who's to say? Oh, quit it! Stop! Stop! I don't know what you're doing, but stop it. Who's to say? Stop. Am I just making stuff up? Who knows? I need you to stop. <laughs> but no, yeah, it, it, it is. that. Yeah. There's that. There's like um, the Cassie Cotta case where her yes. ex-husband was like 
running around with flyers and was on the news. Yes. And, or uh, just all, there's all, there's a million yes. examples of this. Even that, um, the, the guy, oh my gosh, why did I forget his name? Uh, in, in Colorado, murdered his pregnant wife and his two young daughters. Yep. There was that one. There Chris was, Watts. Chris Watts. There was, I can't remember his name, but the guy who was like on the news talking about his neighbor yes. girl. And then, then they mentioned that they found her body and he's, he like freezes up on camera. Like, oh yes. no, he's like, they're going to get me now. It was him. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you see it all the time. They just can't help themselves. It's because they want to know how close the police are to figuring things out. But here's the stupid thing. He, he came onto police radar after he accidentally happened upon G's body with like surprising accuracy. Like... He was just like, oh, wow, here she is. And it's like, how did you find her so quickly, number one? Number two, like, I mean, anyways. So the young man that found her on the beach was Mark Allen Smith. So. Oh. Yeah. So he's the one who found her. And it was just like, hmm. Hmm. So police kind of started to piece it all together. Um, so anyways, he finally was arrested for the crime for killing Jean. He was connected to her quickly. I mean, and he had a personal connection with her. So he knew her. So, I mean, it kind of like... And people knew he knew her. Yes. Which I... And and her friend saw her, like knew where she was going and saw her get in the car with him. It's like, duh. He's the last known person with her. Exactly. And he has a history of being violent and assaulting when he was young, assaulting people. And anyway, so after he's finally arrested for the crimes... He quickly gave himself up and confessed to what he had done. And investigators got more than what they bargained for. Uh, They knew of the two McHenry cases that, you know, um, Gene and Gene. But Mark also confessed to the murders of Janice and Obi Fay, two cases that he wasn't specifically connected to. Um, So, I mean, not that I knew of, not that I could see. Uh, I could see him being more of a suspect in the... Janice case because like he worked there he was known to be I mean you know what I mean like there's more of a connection yeah the OB Faye thing and that's in the same area as McHenry sort of I so. guess the OB Faye thing would be more of a in hindsight like yes. oh he was we know he was there yeah and then he skipped town I mean but it's a different state so it's kind of like it's hard to put together especially in 1970s right or whatever right exactly so um even more shocking he stated that he murdered eight women in germany while he was stationed there west germany i'm sorry yes thank the you. the wall has not fallen yet thank you history buff um while he was stationed there later he recanted and said oh it was quote only two women only two women he only oh it was just two people i murdered in cold blood i wonder if they ever put all that together like who they were if he even or, or something yes we're gonna talk about that okay sweet um so the tell all in custody, Mark gave all the details and put all the pieces together for the crimes he was accused of committing. So in the case of o- Obi Faye Ash, it was kind of straightforward. He just said of her, quote, I murdered her. I strangled her. It's like, that's all you have to say about this totally innocent woman. Anyway, in the case of Jean Bianchi, he had a chance encounter with Jean at the laundromat where he forced her into his car at knife point whereupon he repeatedly raped, stabbed, and choked her, which is just his MO, 100%. He then drove just out of town and dumped Jean into a nearby stream. As he was leaving, he saw Jean trying to crawl up the embankment and escape. So he went back, he caught Jean, violently sexually assaulted her, and he said he tried to drown her in the creek, then pulled her shirt over her head and began repeatedly stabbing her until he could hear that her lungs had collapsed. And after assuring her death, Mark returned her body to the stream where it was later found. He said that night he went home, washed his knife in himself, and then went to sleep. And I was like, is this a joke? Are you kidding me right now? No, not kidding. He's a piece of crap. He's like the murderer version of Angela when they ask her how she can sleep at night. (laughs) What does she say? I forget. She's like, I have a tea or something, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. And I read a book and I fall asleep. That's how I sleep at night. Oh, it's when she's cheating yeah. on Andy, I think. Yes, it, it okay. is. Okay. Because she's a bad person. Yeah. Uh, so in the case of Janice Balliard, so what had happened after she had rebuffed his advances, Mark became absolutely enraged. He beat Jan and began choking her until she was unconscious 
Mark then took Jan to another room where he raped her. Afterwards, he removed Jan's pantyhose and used it to strangle her to death. Um, And he just left her there. (laughs) So in the case of Jean Lingenfelter, uh, Mark confessed that he had beaten, raped, and murdered Jean, strangling her with her own bra. Her nose and jaw were broken. Her liver her was her liver was lacerated too. So again, I don't know if it was from stabbing or just that, just pummeling this poor girl. So after he made sure she was dead, he violently used a beer bottle to sexually assault her, which caused traumatic lacerations to her body. After he committed these atrocities, he put Jean in his trunk, drove to McCollum Lake, and dumped her body there. She was a child. She was 17 years old. Just in case you forgot. Right. Murdered on her prom night. No, no. Wasn't it? No, they had just gone to prom together. Oh, okay. At so some point. But they, like, she was a week away from graduating with honors okay. from high school. Like, a promising young woman. Um... He also stated that he had murdered those eight women in Germany, West Germany, while stationed there. But he said he could not remember their names. <laughs> okay. But they, he told his story. He, like I said, he later recanted and said it was just two women. Though the stories and facts he gave of these eight women, he kind of like knew the dates and stuff. It all lined up with these women who had unsolved murders. Although he gave his confessions and everything totally lined up, German investigators never proceeded with a case against Mark. Which I guess would be... A really hard thing to do. Yes. And also... Very expensive and time consuming. And like, and what are you going to do? Like, we're going to have your trial there in the US and then we're going to ship you off to West Germany to have a different trial. Right. And then like, where do you keep him? Right. I don't know. Right. So, right. It, it's kind of... Just, it, it's almost a, like, don't even work... Wait, I've, I've, seen, I've seen other cases where like, there's one, I've sort of mentioned it before where it, there's like, a thing happened in Florida as yeah, well yeah. as in yes. like Arkansas and some other places. Yes. When they had him so dead to rights in Arkansas, they didn't even worry about the Florida case. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I'm thinking. Like Jeremy was like, let's see how this plays out with you guys. And then if he doesn't get a conviction, then maybe we can talk about it. Cause clearly he's a person who does not need to be out in the public. But so, I mean, and I kind of get that, you know, because I mean, what's, what's the point of wasting those resources when he's already behind bars? You know what I mean? Especially if it's a very strict, you know, sentence. So Mark gave these confessions with no remorse and said of his victims, quote, everyone has to die sometime. Sounds like people denying COVID. (laughs) But I mean, like, sure, people have to die sometime, but you're not the one that gets to decide when they die, buddy. Anyway, prosecutors believe his victim count could be as high as 20 20 there are he lived he's just jumped around to so many lived so many different places in such a short time there's some in like washington dc there's some in like maybe florida or something like that i mean there's multiple cases that he could be connected to so they do not believe these are his only victims so in the aftermath mark stood trial for some of the crimes he had committed uh he was sentenced to 500 years for the murders he had committed in illinois And he only dodged the death penalty there because there was a moratorium on the death penalty at his time of sentencing, which I don't know if anybody needs to die. Eh, Anyway, I don't know. I'm eating my own words. It's not my it's not my job to decide who gets to live and die. But this piece of crap should not be around. On April 27th, 1977, Mark was caught trying to escape prison through a boiler room. He pled guilty and was sentenced to an additional 18 years in prison. Ha! So while in prison, he also helped to pen a book titled Legally Sane, where he details his crimes. This book is also where he gave details on the murders in Germany. His defense team helped him to write and publish it, which is pretty disgusting if you ask me. And a quote from this book, and Mark himself states, quote, It was sort of like the so-called ecstasy of the hunt must be for animals, only I'm just a little bit above the hunt in snatching girls. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, why was this book allowed to be published, number one? Seems like an awfully high opinion for somebody who's just a <laughs> who's in murder prison. rapist. And who's in prison. Like, like well, he just has a high opinion of himself. And it's just like, you're just a horrible murder rapist. I don't, I don't know what you want from me. And all serial killers are like, think they're above, like, the law and think they're so much smarter than everybody else. So it's like, well, 
clearly you're pretty stupid because you put yourself in the case. You're like, oh, let me help. Oh my gosh, I found Jean. How did I find her? Oh, I was the one that did it. How did you figure that out? Anyways, so every three years, he has a mandatory parole hearing, but the families of his victims have not forgotten them. They take up the mantle in defense of those who cannot defend themselves. It is unlikely that he will ever be released. If he is released, he will immediately be relocated to Arkansas, where he will be required to serve his life sentence for the rest of his natural life, which I love. It's like, ha ha, I got parole. Psych. No, you're going to die in Arkansas, (laughs) which we all know is sad. Um, In one of his parole hearings, Dr. Joseph Wepman, a psychologist who examined Mark years ago, stated, quote, Mark Allen Smith is always adapting, changing his story or his coloration to suit the circumstances. He will no doubt come up for parole within our lifetimes, and he will look and sound like a repentant and rehabilitated sinner. That would be like giving a driver's license, like letting him out. That would be like giving a driver's license to somebody who is blind, and I don't want to be on the road when he's driving the car. Don't let him out. He should remain in Statesville for the rest of his life, which is like, Perfectly said. Absolutely. 100%. So he is currently still incarcerated in Illinois. He has renamed himself. It said on the, it said on Wikipedia, Remington Steel, but I think it might be Remington Steel would make more sense, but I don't know. What a dork. What a terrible name. He just, sells. It's just like, you know what? I'm going to make myself sound very cool with this cool guy name. It's like, well, no, you're, you're, you're still, still not cool. You're still a piece of crap. And your name sounds like something a dork would come up with. Yeah. Because it is. It sounds like something from a romance novel. It's from a TV show. Well, was it really? Starring Pierce Brosnan. Oh, Before he became James Bond. Really? Yeah. Remington Steele. I don't know that. It's before our time, I believe. Again, there's, there's the hubris again. Who do you think you are? Like. Who, what was the character of Remington Steel like? Do you know? It was, it was Pierce Brosnan, so it was probably like a real cool guy. Suave guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, who do you think you are? And he's a bald guy with a white goatee. So. Like, I think there was talk that um, Brosnan was going to be Bond bef- before like he became Bond because of the Remington, Remington Steel. And oh, stuff. so like it set the precedent for him being Bond. Right. It's... He's like a cool guy. Like looking at his picture, it's cool. Pierce Brosnan with the with the gun. Of course it is. It's like you you are, sir. You are not that. Anyway, he sells his oil paintings to prison guards, and he's working on his third college degree. Great for you. Whatever. Uh. So this may or may not seem like justice, which it's kind of hard to wrestle with those feelings. We've talked talked about the death penalty before and how we feel about it. Who deserves it? Who can say? Uh, maybe this guy, but. There is never truly justice when someone so innocent, so loved, so dear is ripped from the world in such a violent manner. And Jean Bianchi's mother, who is now deceased, said of the pain, quote, I speak from experience when I say a family of the victim is never the same after such a death of a loved one. Emotional, mental suffering still continues for each one of us. The sentence of grief for the families of the murder victim is is a life sentence it cannot be commuted and parole is not possible and like i just gave myself chills saying that because (laughs) i mean her words like that's put so 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 well like this grief is forever i there's no escaping it and this person caused it like there's no getting away from it you will think about it every single day so um anyways i hope anyways The good news is, is that he's incarcerated and if he gets out, he's going to be re-incarcerated. So yeah, if he somehow gets parole for reasons that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, no, no. Doesn't seem like it should happen. I mean, there are, I mean, each, every three years, the families of each of these women, they come forward and they protest it. And even uh, Smith himself said, it is unlikely I will ever be paroled. And I mean, he knows it's probably not going to happen. I mean, the likelihood is almost non-existent. So it's just, you know, and these, it's so inspiring to see that the families still care so much about these women so many years later. Um, it's a wonderful thing. Also, something interesting in my research I want to bring out. I want to look at the dates. Let's look at the dates of things, okay? He was born June 27th. 
At age seven, his mother remarried. He stabbed... Wait, hold on. 1967, he was court-martialed, court-martialed, court-martialed for assaulting those African-American colleagues. Uh, the, the murder of Obi Faye Ash is kind of outside of that seven range, but January 27th, 1970, 27-year-old Jean Bianchi was murdered. And February 27th, 1970, May 27th was Jean Lingenfelter, and she was 17 years old. And he stabbed one of his victims 17 times. I think it was Obi Faye. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But that date <laughs> and those, it just keeps coming up over and over and over again. And I absolutely believe there's a connection. That's not just, <laughs> that's not just happenstance. Also, there was two genes and a Janus. Like, those names are all very similar. Gene, Gene, Janus. So I thought that was... And his mother was Sally Jean Chester, possibly. Or it may have been Dolores Recklin. We're not really sure. So, I mean, it's just very, very interesting that that keeps popping up. Don't you think? And on April 27th, 1977, he was caught trying to escape prison. It's It's just weird. It's weird. I think that he has an obsession with that. I don't know why, but I think he has an obsession with either 27 or 7 or 17. It's possible, I guess. I believe it 100%. All right. And that is the story of the victims of of March 5th. Well, um, do you ever, you've done the like grocery pickup like online where you like (laughs) order online, then go to parking spot and tell them, hey, I want to, I want to come bring my stuff. Yes. So I did that for the first time. Wow. Maybe never again. Oh, why? Or maybe I will. It what? These are problems. It was a disaster, is why. Why? What did it you was, do? <laughs> it was not. How was it a disaster? So I get I get to the store. Um, I pull up the the little app. I'm like, all right. Was this, was this Kroger or Walmart? I don't want to name stores. I need to know. No, they're not paying for this. Um, <laughs> so I get there and I'm like, all right, time to hit the thing. And it's like, it didn't work. It didn't work. Like, okay, well, I'll call the number. That didn't work. I realized I have no service. Why do you have any service? I don't know. So then I I turn the cellular, cellular off and then turn it back on. No service. Turn the phone off, turn it back on. No service. So then I'm like, is there something wrong with my phone? Or is it the location? Yeah. Or is it like rebooting still or something? So I, I to get out of the people's way, even though there's plenty of spots, I just start driving around. Eventually, service comes back. What? I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to go drive back and see if it works. Get there, pull in the parking spot, no service again. It's just that parking spot? It's the entire parking lot area of this store. For some reason, I have no service. And obviously, nobody else is having this problem because people are sitting there getting their stuff. You need a new phone really badly. I do. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'll drive away and I'll call that number. Call the number and it's a machine and you it has. You want to know what spot you're in? Yeah. And it's like, which spot are you in? It's like, I don't know. I'm not in one. I'm just trying to figure this out. <laughs> so then I drive around some more, find a parking lot nearby that where I still have service, call up the store itself, and I'm like, I, I'm so sorry, but I need help with this. I This isn't y'all's fault. Just direct me to the, the pickup people or whatever it's called. I need to speak that number directly. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just like, I don't know why, but my, my phone has no service in your parking lot. Only your parking. It is a black hole. Just your parking it lot. It really is. And I'm just like, I don't know why, but just look out for this type of car. <laughs> I'm going to be there in like a minute because I'm close enough by. So that, that was just like a whole mess. And also, this is probably my fault. I haven't looked at the receipt to be sure because I didn't order a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but I ordered some green bean, canned green beans and I accidentally ordered a Whittle Whittle can just like a little little whittle, whittle. just a whittle eight ounce can <laughs> like like that's probably my fault i probably didn't look at it close enough but man. Like, who would want one can of little green beans 
Just one. Yeah, just a little little can. Little little can. Just itty bitty. I don't know. That's really funny. I have only had success with it. I actually one actually no, I haven't. One time I used it and I got somebody else's groceries and they got mine. Mm-hmm. See, and so that's I like just their I'd, fault. Though. Yeah, yeah. I came out. I was. I got home and I was like, "These aren't my groceries." And it's not like I can just like. I'm going to like get out of my car and go look in the back of my car and be like, did you put the right groceries in? Because I'm trusting you. And so then I came back. I was like, these are not my groceries. <laughs> and they were like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. We gave somebody else your groceries. And they're like, do you want to keep it? And I was like, no, I want the person to have their groceries and I would like mine. <laughs> like, I, no, I don't. I, I, I just want my groceries back. Just give me my groceries. Anyways, that person came back and we switched and it was fine. But yeah, it's good. But it's just like. Mm, that's a pretty bad mess up. I'm sure it happens though. Oh, stuff like that happens all the time in the service industries. Let me yeah, tell you, you I worked up. at restaurants, you um, did. but it's, it's mine was mm, all my fault basically, but it's just, <laughs> well, it was, it it just such really a disaster. Your, it wasn't really your fault though. Well, it wasn't their fault. We'll say. No, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't anybody's fault. Yeah. So it's, it's not that store's fault. It's just, it was just very frustrating though. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, I just want to get these stupid groceries. I hit the button. That's like, I'm on the way. I'll be there within 15 minutes. Guess what? I wasn't basically because I had this whole whole blue. Just my phone doesn't work here for some reason. That's really funny. I even I was like, "Is there a Wi-Fi I can reach in this?" <laughs> no. You could have gone okay. into the. You could have parked in a spot, gone into the store, used their Wi-Fi to say, "I'm here. Run back out and get in your car." Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. That was that was very annoying though. That's funny. Um. You have anything interesting to talk about? I as do. Far as that's like. Before we go to what you're looking at? Oh. Uh, if no, we'll just go to that. Yeah, let's just go to that. All right. Um, well, we already talked about The Mandalorian. Don't harp on yeah. me. I'm going to watch it, okay? Um, I usually have more stuff to talk about, so I'll go first maybe, or at least I'll say one thing first. Okay, you um, say one thing first. Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> it's always Star Wars. I, it is lately. Because I, I want to get through these shows because like... You want to know, yeah. There are characters and things that happen in them that get referenced... And later things, and will be referenced in these later shows that are being made, yeah, like yeah. Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, so watching Rebels, I, I I had low expectations going in because a lot of people were kind of met on it compared to Clone Wars. Yeah. And I quite like it so far. There you go. Yeah. That's what matters. They're, the animation's not as good. I don't think they had the same kind of budget as the end of Clone Wars had. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it's slightly different style of animation. Uh, the there is there have been two parts that have been really annoying to watch animation wise, which is where the inquisitor, uh, starts using his lightsaber and it like spins around real fast. And there is like something happens to the frame rate on the show to where it's like very choppy. Suddenly mm. sort of like when you play a video game and too much stuff is on screen and it goes, starts yeah going very choppy. It just out of nowhere, the frame rate is just horrible and mm. it's very jarring. It's only happened twice, but it, I didn't care for that. Mm-hmm. But so far, I, I think it's pretty good. It it's a uh, it's more kid friendly than Clone Wars. It, at least more so than Clone Wars became, I guess. Mm-hmm. So far, mm-hmm. we'll see. I'm not super far into it. Um, cool. Yeah, I refunded Cyberpunk because <laughs> they gave me the option, and I was like, "Yeah, why not? I'm not. I don't care for this." You know. I, I was talking to a friend at work about this. And I was like, hey, John got Cyberpunk and it's pretty disappointing. Well, he has a PS4. And so it's kind of like, I mean, he he played on there. It's like the graphics aren't very good or anything like that. And he was like, and they, they have these radios that play around the city and it's this music. And he like turned it off his headphones. And it's just like butt rock. <laughs> like It's just like total butt rock. And I was like, we couldn't pick better music than this. And I mean, it, he... And even a friend at work, I was telling him about this. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I, his son got a PS5. He's like, we played on the PS5 and I was not impressed with it on the PS5. Well, the, to be fair, the PS5 version yeah. is not technically out yet. Okay. So what you're doing is playing the PS4, PS4 version, version on PS5. It and might it, run a little better, but you're not playing the official PS5 version. Let them know whenever that comes out though, you get a free upgrade to the PS5 version. Okay. That's what it was. Uh, so, I mean, he, anyways okay that explains it yeah the the yeah if you want to find somebody who's like no this thing looks good and runs good it's gonna be somebody with like a sweet ass pc yes yeah and they said on pc that's what they said a pc was like but really it, good really honestly it's just i don't think it plays very well part of it is 
like I mentioned about the frame rate on Rebels. Yeah. The frame rate on Cyberpunk is always terrible and yeah. always like herky jerky in a way that like kind of hurts my eyes. It's kind of like um, a worse version of that show Dragon Prince I tried to watch. Oh, yeah. Where it had yeah. like the weird frame rate. Yeah. And I was like, I, I can't do this right now. Yeah. So when I saw the thing where it was like, hey, Sony's giving refunds and also pulling it from their store. Which is really bad. I was just like, yeah, I'll take the out. I'm out. I, whatever. I'm, yeah. I'll do it's that. Fine. Well, and you know, that was a chair. And you know, I... A likely story. <laughs> you know, people were like, PlayStation 5 is out. Give us Cyberpunk. And they were like, we're not ready. They're like, no, you said we would have it out. Give it to us now. And they're like, okay, it's not ready. And people were like, what is this garbage? What is it? Well, the weird thing is it was supposed to release in November. Yes. And... Like a week before it was going to come out, they said, nope, we're delaying it again, yes. which is the crazy part. Yeah. So usually, you know, a delay comes months in advance, not right. a week Maybe they or whatever it was. Maybe they have it ready. Well, they clearly didn't. It's, it's like uh, Shigeru Miyamoto always says, a, a uh, bad game is always bad, or a bad release game is always bad. A delayed game can be good. That's true. Um, that's Why that's less true live? these days. Why is words to live by? Yeah, it's less true these days though, because of constant updates and patches and stuff. But well, you know what won't let you down? Oh, uh, what's that? The Lego games. They're a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Nice, innocent, good fun. I feel like they only control slightly better than Fall Guys, and I don't like the way Fall Guys controls. So there. Okay. That's uh, that's my hot take right there. When I play a video game, I like the controls to be good. Okay, that's fine. That's why I like Hades so much, because it controls super good and feels awesome. <laughs> sure, whatever you say. Oh, my God. Um, what else are you looking at? Um, so, remember how I started uh, watching, I watched that Gravity Falls show? Yeah, what I think? bought a book. You bought it, a it's Gravity very Falls book? I, got, I bought a Gravity Falls book. It's a very good show. I finished it. Okay. And I was looking at stuff, and it was like, hey, there's this book that's got, like, extra lore and stuff, and, Weird. like... It's kind of, it's, this it's reminds called, me of Adventure Time. It, it's called uh, Journal 3. And it's basically like a book that's done in the style of the journals from the uh, show. Uh-huh. And so it's got like pictures and like uh, of like various monsters, like the abominable bro man, <laughs> uh, the uh, barfing fairies, the invisible <laughs> wizard, stuff like that. And it's like got their drawings and like what their deal is and like various and like lore stuff. So that's a really cool book. Uh-huh. So I got that. Uh, I watched I watched wrestling, and I only bring this up because of this ridiculous thing that happened. Tell, Andrew, tell me. I am on pins and needles. It's so dumb. <clears throat> okay. They had The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, against Randy Orton in an Inferno match. Fire? Yes. It was fire? fire? Yes. Inferno matches, historically, are terrible. This is probably the best one, and it was okay. Oh. Partially because they got to do it without a crowd, so they could do some wacky stuff. Uh Uh-huh. For instance, there's very obvious editing that they put together mixed with the live stuff they were doing. Weird. So it'd be like, zoom in real close in certain spots, because they did like the spot where he did like a trail of fire towards a thing, and somebody (laughs) dodged out of the way. Oh, my gosh. It's like, oh, that was very edited. Oh, no. And you win the match by setting the other person on fire. That's, that's terrible. As a healthcare professional, I do not recommend this. <laughs> so Bray Wyatt, the fiend, mm-hmm. he's like a supernatural monster. He got set on fire okay. and then he got knocked out. Oh no. And then, and then the best part happened. Randy Orton went out, grabbed some gasoline. He'd won the match by now, poured gasoline onto the fiend and set him on fire and killed him. He is dead. Not really in real he life. He murdered a man. Not in real life. No, there was very... Again, this is they. Okay, edited. you had me worried. You had me. A, I'm. Good, I'm not gonna lie. You had me a little worried. Caitlin, wrestling is fake. Um, okay. I don't want to <laughs> blow your mind there. Oh my There's, gosh. like I said, they could edit things. Uh-huh. There's some very clear edits of where they like did. They filmed something earlier where they had a guy on fire mm-hmm. and burnt to ash. And it was clearly a dummy. Oh, it, like so much clearly a dummy when they oh. cut. Just hilarious. But there's like, he murdered a man in like the storyline. We need to do an episode about this. And the best part is like the closing, the closing shot of the show was Randy Orton doing his goofy pose that he always does. He's done it for like two decades. And 
there's like fire all around him. And it's like, I killed the guy. <laughs> and it's like, is no. he, like what's going to happen in storyline now? Does he go to jail because no. he committed murder? Is he going to be on the lam now? Is he, is he running from the cops? Is that going to be his storyline from now on? Like, maybe, yeah, maybe well, he's ready to be caught in, in his career. Maybe he's done. It's maybe this is his out. Maybe he, he's tired. He murdered a man on oh. TV. It sounds like he wants to go to prison. This is ridiculous. Agreed. I, 100 You have never said such truer <laughs> words, Andrew. Even in the world of wrestling, this is ridiculous. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Sounds pretty on par for me. <laughs> you There's usually not people straight up murdered. Well, not anymore. Doesn't sound fun. I don't Unless it's Lucha Underground. They straight up murdered people on that. But that show was we, that show was intentionally weird. Oh, okay. Have you been watching anything else or? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh my god, I get to talk. Okay. You you told you asked me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um That's on you this time. Okay. So, this weekend, John and I went to go see the Conway Symphony Orchestra. Um it didn't have high expectations because it's a community orchestra. I was like, it's going to be good. They were doing a Trans-Siberian Orchestra concert. And I was like, this is going to be A for effort. It's going to be, you know, I'm glad they socially distanced. Everybody wore masks. It was it was great. It was good. And I was like, you know what? It's just going to be nice to be in a theater setting. That show rocked my face off. It was amazing. My friend Gunnar Bartlett was in charge of like the production of it. Dude, it was like a full-on mini TSO concert. Like, it was rocking. The musicians were excellent. The sound was excellent. The singers were phenomenal. It was... uh, And they had a string orchestra, a real string orchestra in the back. And it was awesome. It was so good. Like, I had so much fun. It was incredible. I couldn't believe it was as good as it was. Go see it next year, 100%. All right. What yep. else you got? Um, I finished watching a movie. Oh, yeah. I finished watching Jojo Rabbit. And you still think it's great? I love it. Okay. That's one of the greatest movies I think I've ever seen. And like when I saw it, I was like, I don't really understand why this movie was nominated for so many awards. And it's like, I don't understand the premise of it. I didn't get the title. You know, Jojo Rabbit. I was like, what is what is that? What does that mean? And then I was like, it's funny, but it's Hitler in Ger- world, 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 war, blah, 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 blah. wartime Germany, like Nazi Germany. I was like, how is this funny, but also like heartfelt? We used to make fun of Hitler a lot more. I think we should get back to it to yeah. some extent. Yeah, he's a terrible human. Um, But yeah, let me tell you. Oh, sorry. I'm moving the mic a lot. Please don't. I'm so sorry. Um, So... I think I start pretty much the bait, the, what I said earlier, you know, last week about it pretty much stands true. I was crying at the end of it. Like it was so bittersweet. I, it was a, it was a precious movie. And I love that it took war, Nazi wartime Germany from the viewpoint of a 10 year old boy, a 10 year old little boy living in there, the propaganda that was in his face, how he dealt with it, how he dealt with knowing a Jewish person and how that fit into his ideas of everything. It was, it was great. It was a wonderful movie. It was funny. It was cute. It was sad. It was heartfelt. It was everything. It was great. Love it. All the awards for Jojo Rabbit. I might be a little behind on that. I think it came out like two years ago. Uh, <clears throat> maybe last year. I think year. it was last year. last year. I can't remember. Or maybe early this <clears throat> year. I have no idea. I know. All time is nothing anymore. Oh, also, get this. Get what my work did. The hospital I work for. So, you know, PPE, personal protective equipment. You know, it's kind of a hot item right now, you know. And masks are a big deal. And N95 masks are kind of hard to get a hold of. Listen, our hospital provided its employees N95 masks for themselves and their immediate family members to take home for Christmas so that it could be with other family members. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that awesome? Like, I got, (laughs) maybe I'm just really emotional lately, but I got like a little teary-eyed when my boss handed me that. And I was like, this is for me to take home, like to keep my family safe so that we can see, you know, we're not going to be all up in other family members' faces, but we can still socially distance and see them a little more safely. And, you know, because it protects a little bit better than a regular mask. And it was just a really, really thoughtful gesture to show that the place I work for really cares about us. And you know what? I needed that. So, thanks work. 
Yeah, there's not enough of that from uh, workplaces all over the place. Totally agree. In all industries. <laughs> John was like, my workplace would probably hope that I died. <laughs> it's like so many workplaces are like that. And that's what sets my workplace apart is that they freaking care about us, man. 100% care about us. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, well, uh, also coming up pretty soon this Friday, we've got three, well, two big things and one thing I care about. Okay. Tell me. There is oh, also Jojo Rabbit. That's yeah. on, you said that's on HBO Max, right? Yes. It's he texted on HBO, that to me. Uh huh. HBO Max. And I'm watching some more documentaries on HBO Max that I can't wait to talk about. All right. Um, so Disney Plus, Friday <laughs> on Christmas Day, <laughs> Soul yes. from Pixar is coming out. Yes. And on HBO Max, Wonder Woman 1984 is coming out the same day. Super stoked. And then the thing I only care about... uh, Christmas! The Disney Gallery for Mandalorian Season 2 comes out, which is where they do all their behind-the-scenes stuff and discussions. I watched that first one uh, like several weeks ago and thought it was really good, so... Also, I'll probably um, watch it again. It's Christmas Day on Friday. It's Christmas Day. Yeah, that's why all the cool stuff coming out. And there's basketball. The NBA is back nee. on Christmas Day. Nee. There's probably other stuff going on. But it's Christmas Day. That's right. And this Christmas, Andrew, I'm thankful for... Wait, no, that's Thanksgiving. This Christmas, I want a million dollars. That's what Christmas is all about. Well, you're only getting 600 so... Yep, but, for real? That's happening? Yeah. From you? No. From the government. That's happening? Supposedly. Wow. It's been a busy day at work today. I have not had the opportunity to read news. I don't I don't know if that's been confirmed as I record this. Anyway. Gu- guess what? Guess what I'm going to do with it? Uh, stimulate the economy. Put it back to my credit card. <laughs> there you go. You know, it, I don't spend money on fun things. It's that's like, America. I'm going to pay stuff off. <laughs> being, in, being in debt is very America. True. All, that's That's very on brand. I will say, though, again, my work, they paid for my education. The degree I just got, they paid for it. Well, that's good. I work for a good place. Yeah, for now. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. Things change, you know? (laughs) That's true. But for now, yes, I do. I I like it. (laughs) Don't jinx me. God. That's a reverse jinx, though. Oh. Okay. If you say a thing. Something bad? Yeah. If you say jinxing would be like. Uh, during that WWE show, they had this whole goofy thing for about New Year's, where it's like, "Oh no, it's the biggest villain, 2020." And they oh had this like God. goofy CGI thing that they overlaid on actual wrestlers mm-hmm. and like digitally removed the wrestlers, and then had like the 2020 CGI monster being thrown through a table or being hit with a big super kick or something, just all that stuff, and it's like. Yeah, and then oh, here's the here's our say, hero, 2021. It's like y'all jinxed it. 2021 is going to be a disaster. Dang it! It's true. It's very true. You're right. Uh, no, but what? Hey, what's one thing? What's one thing that you wanted for Christmas this year? Oh, I, uh, that Gravity Falls Journal three book. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought about asking for that for Christmas because my parents are still like, "What do you want for Christmas?" And I feel weird about it because yeah. I'm technically an adult. <laughs> um, so. I looked at it and the delivery thing on Amazon was like, it'll be delivered around January 5th or 10th. So I was like, I'll just buy it myself. It's like 10 bucks, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It showed up uh, today, December 21st. Wow. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. They didn't want to make any promises. Uh, I guess not. So that, that's a... Uh, I think as we get older, we I ask want, for I want less. pajama bottoms. Oh. That's my thing. I, those are very comfortable. Yeah. I would love I some need more. Some, pa- I need some new ones. I like that I'm wearing some right now. They're like Christmassy plaid. I like that they have the like fitted fitted ankle on them. They're oh, like, I do not want anything to do with that. Oh, I like it. If I could, if there's, if I could live my life as I pleased without any consequences, mm. I would never wear real pants, like jeans, <laughs> khakis. I know, they're the worst. It would be, it would be athletic shorts Here's what you- and pajama bottoms, but not your little ankle things. What is that about? And I would, ne- if I could, if I could, I would never wear socks either. Socks are pretty constricting. Here's exactly. what, here's that's what, what your ankle thing sounds like. No, it's not. I promise. It's great. Here's what you would like. A kilt. Promise. Bet. No, because that's too revealing and I'm too shy. No, no, no. It's fine. You're covered. You're nice. You just wear under underneath it. It was, it was fine. But that's what I love about... You remember when I used to wear dresses all the time? I don't anymore because I, 
I don't work in cute places anymore. But remember where remember that when I was wear dresses like all the freaking time. Yeah. It was, it was a long time ago. You know why I did that? Cuz it was really comfortable and it wasn't pants. And if I wanted to like high kick, I could. It's fine. I could do that if I wanted to. I mean, I mean, not, could not, you should you? No, I don't just say I should, but if I wanted to, I could cuz you know what? There's no jeans holding me back, baby. It's all it's all free movement. So, that's why you should wear a kilt. I don't know. I'm not. Or a dress. I, if you want to dress, that's uh, fine. I'm, I'm too, uh, what's the word? Self-conscious. Yes. There it is. To to be worried. I don't want to have to worry about like revealing myself. <laughs> right? So. I don't think it's a problem. I don't. How many, how many times have you seen a woman reveal themselves wearing a dress? On accident? Yeah. Wearing like a dress or a skirt? Yeah. Several times. No, you have Yes, I have. Have you heard of the wind? I've seen that happen. <laughs> Have you heard of the wind? <laughs> yes. I I'm just walking down the street like in a windy place and she's like whoop, whoop there why, it is. That's there why you, you wear like little little shorts underneath it cuz it's like, you know what? I'm comfortable, but I also have little shorts on and it's fine. So you can see it's fine. It's totally fine. Oh, I'm a big supporter of of dresses and skirts and free movement in the leg area. I am too. I mean, athletic shorts I think handle that for me. That's why like if like so if like i get trapped in a blanket i'm like get me out of here <laughs> like if i get twisted up in a blanket you know what i mean yeah it's like get me out i'm gonna oh that's like i went to a massage one time i got I had a massage one time and it was called the warm embrace massage and it was an hour and a half long where was this at hot springs maybe i can't remember but they basically cocooned you and wrapped you like a hot burrito and let me tell you I did not like that at all. I guess I should have guessed that by the description and the title of the massage called the warm embrace, but uh, I, I didn't put two and two together. So they wrapped me up like a hot burrito and I about came unglued. I was like, I need to get out of here. Like I was the massage lady was being really like relaxing and stuff. And I was like, I need to, I'm freaking out. I need to get out of here right now. She's like, okay, give me just a second. And I was like, no, I need to get out. Of, I'm panicking. I need to get, no, I need to get out of here right now. And it's like, I could fear the, feel the fear rise. It was bad. Yeah. I don't, I don't care for that. Like sleeping bags. No, thank you. Don't like them. I like laying in like a bed and being spread able to like spread, five yeah, point star. <laughs> spread my legs around, especially like when like the sheets are a certain level of cold mm. and you just, Rub your legs around it. It's just like, yeah, that feels nice. Yeah, I'm free and it's a little cool, but it's also toasty. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, don't, the, I don't, I don't like the sound we, of your ankle thing. Where did we, okay. That's what, Christmas what it, presents. Yeah, yeah. And pajama bottoms. Yeah. You know, I feel like as we get older, like we, I don't ask for cool things. Like I don't really ask for anything. It's just like, I don't know, whatever you get me. Like I really could use some more black leggings. I don't know. I mean, always get me those, but you know, I think for Christmas, it's been so weird. I've barely seen my family this year. I am going to see my mom, um, which I'm really, really happy about because I haven't seen her in a long time. Um, and I got to see my grandpa, you know, last week. And I, I wish my could have seen my grandma, but, you know, it, it was not to be. And I, I, But I'm glad I got to see my grandpa and my uncle. That really, I didn't think I was going to be able to this holiday season. And I'm really grateful that I got to, so... That's a special Christmas for me. That's good. Yeah. Oh, also, I got to open a Christmas present early. Ooh. You what saw was what it, it was. It's a piano. Well, it's a keyboard. But it's fine. It's a piano. And I'm so excited because I told, listen, I got I got really emotional because when John and I started dating, I was like, when I finish school, I want to take piano lessons and I want to. I want to get back into like my mom forced me to take piano lessons when I was a kid. Hated it. Hated her for making me go. Hated every second of it. And for some reason, I still decided to join band after that, which I hated. I hated it so much. I don't know why I did, but it's the best decision I ever made because band is and was like my life. So uh, anyways, all I have to say I wish I would have, my mom would have forced me to keep going with piano, but she didn't because I hated it so much. And then when I was a music major in college, I had to take, I think a semester or two of piano, but then I didn't practice anymore after that. So all this, any skills I built back up just went right down the toilet. So is this like secretly building up to you becoming a keytar 
master. Oh my gosh. If you can find one and I become proficient at the keyboard, I will play a guitar. I will play the heck out of it. I, I think that's a great idea. Okay. Well, fine. I, I task you with this quest. Okay. But you got to learn to do your keyboard better oh, yeah, first. I can, I, can play, I can play basic things. I can play chords if I needed to. I need you to be able to just be out there ripping it. Like, I want to be like Elton destroying. John, Lady Gaga. Like I want the keyboard to be set on fire Elton by John. Your, your, your actions. Elton John. Exactly. Yeah. Lady Gaga. She, she is an incredible musician. You may not care for her, but she is an incredible musician. I think that's it. I think so too. Um, I'll just say uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Yes. That's right. We can still say it. Merry Christmas. Despite what you were told. Okay. And so- happy holidays <laughs> and whatever else. Merry Christmas. Yes. I celebrate Christmas, but some people don't. That's fine. Happy whatever. Happy whatever you're doing. Happy Festivus. Merry Crimbus. Or if you're British, happy Christmas, which just sounds so happy wrong. Happy Christmas, Harry. <laughs> sounds so wrong. Or if you're Jewish, I think Hanukkah is still happening. I have no idea. I know it's like over a period of a certain amount of days at a certain point in time. It's in this time period. Yeah. It, I, I don't know if it's over or if it's still going or what. I don't know. I know there's like eight days. I don't know. We're from Arkansas. The Jewish population I don't know any is Jewish quite people. small here. Yeah, I don't. Is there a temple here? Probably somewhere. I mean, yeah. Little Rock probably. Probably in Little Rock, the one true city of Arkansas. Whoop, whoop. So, but yeah, there's. Jews do not live in the South. It's, it's not Let it very, be known. It's not very common. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, guys, for real though, we hope you have a very safe, very happy holiday. Please, please, please make good decisions. Wear a mask, wash your hands. You know how we feel about this. Guys, you can catch us on Facebook, Paint the Town Dead. You can catch us on Twitter, Paint the PTT. Wow, I've, I've, I've forgotten. Twitter, PTTD pod. Um, you can email us pttdpod at gmail.com. Oh, Instagram, paint the town dead, all one word. Um, we drop episodes every Tuesday unless I get caught by a plane and then it's going to be delayed. <laughs> um, and we um, drop episodes every Tuesday. I'm, I'm struggling right now. What's happening? It's Christmas. Yes. Your mind's elsewhere. It is elsewhere. Okay, um, thank you guys so much for stopping by. We love each and every one of you. We care about each and every one of you. And we hope that you subscribe, rate, like, share, comment, like five stars, rate five stars. Anything you do helps us out and we greatly appreciate it. Merry Christmas, everybody. And God bless.